I wanted to say it's wonderful to be able to worship with you all in person. I also wanted to say uh, we're so happy we have some guests with us, and we're glad you can uh, worship with us. We oftentimes recognize that at different points in our lives, we get a chance to connect with people we don't always see each week, and it's a chance to be able to connect with the larger family of God, and it's always a blessing. So, I wanted to tell you all about there's this guy in the Netherlands. I know, I know, this has to be a fictional story because everybody knows that the Netherlands is not a real place. What? It's Peter Pan, right? Nether Netherland? Right? <laughs> I swear, when I was a kid, I could never get the two. I was like, which one's the real place? Which one's the fake place? I just decided that Dutch people weren't real. But this guy named Tommy Klein, sorry to all the Dutch people in the world. Okay, all right. So they, this guy named Tommy Klein would go to work each day, and he would walk past this river, and he would see trash along the river. Oh, great, Pastor Jason's an environmentalist. Okay, all right. But what we saw, though, is that he kept seeing the trash over and over again. And so he decided, you know what? I am going to start picking up the trash. Now, you've seen whenever, like, a river or someplace might be, you know, trash polluted. I mean, we've all been to Galveston, okay? And with that is that oftentimes you see this huge, daunting challenge, okay? But after six days, he was just picking up trash, picking up trash, he saw a difference. Okay, so he kept going. But it wasn't just him who saw the difference. It was also his neighbors that saw the difference. And they thought, hey, why don't we pick up the trash while we're walking along as well? So other people started picking up the trash as they were going along. And five weeks later, that stretch of river on their way to work was completely clean. Now, this is very much of like a parable in a lot of ways, you know, like picking up a little bit at a time, a little bit early on. But what stood out to me is that it always seems like the biggest tasks, the ones that are the most daunting, the ones that are the hardest, are the ones that usually require a little bit of work at a time. Uh, how many of you have like gone through like migraines and such like that like before? Okay, a, a number of you, a number of you. Uh, myself as well. And I remember one day going through uh, having one of the worst migraines. I was having them for years, and finally somebody said go to see a chiropractor, and I was like, oh great, he's gonna like pop my neck, and I'm gonna die. Um, <laughs> But I ended up going, and then on top of that is I made sure I was getting more sleep, and I started taking some medicine, and everything was getting better and better. I had a fewer migraines and fewer migraines. Until finally, at one point in time, I realized, well, I haven't had a migraine in the last few months. So I switched off the medicine and went to an aspirin every morning, but I'd still stretch, and I'd still make sure I was good, got the sleep. And I've had maybe two or three migraines a year for the last few years. But it took a little bit each time to get to that place where I needed to be. And the thing is that oftentimes when we're looking at the kingdom of God, we are oftentimes looking for something big and grandiose at one time, but the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. These things are tiny. They start small. And not only that, but a mustard seed, as it's growing, it doesn't just shoot straight up. It grows outward. But it also doesn't happen overnight. Do any of you like do any like planting, growing things? Yeah. Oh, oh, you, oh, yeah, good, oh, good, awesome, awesome, yeah. All right, excellent, excellent. I'm terrible at growing things. A, 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 as a kid, they told you to put a, a bean in a wet paper towel and a little sprout would come out of it. In that teacher's entire career, I was the only one who couldn't get a sprout to grow. <laughs> she was just looking at me, she was like, I don't get it. This has never happened before. And I'm like, I'm seven. You're not helping me out here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So maybe not. Yeah. I weed things. But and then with this though is oftentimes when we are, you know, when you're spreading out the seed, do you go back the next day and all of a sudden it's blossomed? No, no, not so much. Do, do you go over there and just start yelling, hey, mustard seed grow and then all of a sudden it, it comes is that where i've been going wrong that's where we're right you know they they they, they said that a, a, a an aggie tried to be a chicken farmer so he went out into the field and took a bunch of baby chicks and planted them all into the field and couldn't figure out why they weren't growing so he called up uh, texas a&m to say i'm not sure what's going wrong and they said well we think we know what the problem is but we're going to need a soil sample 
Class of 02, I swear. Okay, but with that, though, is that oftentimes what we see with the kingdom of God is that it is oftentimes the small things that end up becoming a part of a life of faith that doesn't always stand out loud and obvious right off the bat. Um, the other day, we were doing the, the men's group. Here's a plug. Once a month, guys go to the breweries, just letting you know. You're welcome. That's your plug for the day. Okay. But afterwards, someone said, hey, would you like to go dancing? And I thought, sure, why not? Let's go dancing. Somebody ditched me, but, you know, there you go. Um, with that, though, is getting there, I hadn't been dancing in years, especially with COVID, but I hadn't gone. I had gone some in college. I had gone some after seminary. I had gone from time to time, but it was this thing in the back of my mind is realizing I am a complete goofball. I ha I, it, you see me stumble over my feet up here. No, that is not some fancy footwork. I'm just klutzy, okay? It just is what it is. And so I go over there, and I see this dance hall, and turn out none of the people that I thought I knew that were going to be there were there. And so I'm like, okay, let's, whatever. You want to dance? Okay, sure. And I don't know how. I, I did fine. I did spin moves I didn't realize that I actually knew how to do. I, didn't, I, I was actually confident. I was making jokes in the middle of it. I was actually cool. Yeah, I know you don't. I swear, though, I really was. But the thing was that it was also that throughout so many years is that different lessons, different experiences had been building up so that at that point in time, whenever I was relaxed and enjoying the night and meeting new people, it all kicked in. See, that's the thing is oftentimes we think of faith as something that we have to try to turn into a big hoopla or a big event or a big moment. It has to be something where all of a sudden you have this giant feeling and then all of a sudden everything works out perfectly. But that's not the kingdom of heaven. See, the kingdom of God is not like here's a seed, boom, it's all grown the next day. The kingdom of God is slow and patient and methodical and each day building on it one step at a time. The thing is that truth be told is that oftentimes with the kingdom of God we also struggle because we don't feel our faith all the time. There are times whenever we don't see anything coming out of that seed. There are times whenever we see maybe one or two leaves coming off, and then we don't see anything for another week, two weeks. And we wonder, what happened? Is it done? And the thing with faith is that oftentimes with it, we get discouraged because we think of it as either I have a big faith that's going to move mountains, or I must be failing at it. I haven't had enough faith. I haven't felt it enough. I haven't grasped to God strong enough. I haven't pursued it enough. I haven't been a good enough Christian to really make any progress. But that completely misses what faith actually is. Um, some years back, uh, I went to Guatemala. I, I took a left turn on Memorial, and when I should have taken a right, I ended up in Guatemala. And... Uh, with that is that I, after two weeks, a uh, person I knew said, hey, let's go hike this mountain. And I said, is that a thing? They said, sure, yeah. We'll go hike Mount Akatanango, right next to this volcano. I said, sure, why not? And then, of course, they bailed on me the night before. But that morning, I got up with five people I'd never known before the day before, and we went to Mount Akatanango, and we started our hike. And 15 minutes into it, I'm like, this is the worst idea I've ever had in my life. It is 6 a.m. I'm freezing cold. I'm already miserable. I can't seem to get up any of this. And 15 minutes later, I'm like, nope, I'm done. Okay, I'm done. I'm, Y'all go ahead. I get it. I see the mountain. Look, I wish you well. I'm sure it's great. I'm just going to go hike back into town, which that would have taken all day anyway. But the guide that was there paused and said, hey, look, I got it. That's okay. This is the hardest part. Because it's like where all the ash and the sand and everything is. You're, you're having a hard time. I've been here. I've done that. I got it. I promise you, you can make it. This was the hard part. Totally lied. 
rest of it was horribly hard. Six hours up, three hours down. It was, it was hard the entire time. But the point was is that for me, I actually, I was like, this is the dumbest idea ever. But the person that I had faith in had done it so many times, and I trusted him. And when he said that he had my back, I knew that he did. Because that's the thing about faith, is that faith is not about how strong we feel it or how much we work at it. It's always who faith is in. Because our faith is in the one who's already gone through this. Our faith is in the one who has already conquered death, already come to life. Our faith is in the one who has each step of the way said, I am with you always. Because it is God himself saying, I am here with you. Emmanuel. That's the thing about a mustard seed. It starts small, but it's growing up to the sun that it knows is there. It grows into the soil. It grows into the nutrients and the water that is waiting for it. It has nothing to do with how big that mustard seed is. And today, I know that there are so many of you that are probably in places where I know I've been. Times wherever we're looking around us and we're like, I have not made any real difference. I haven't done anything today or yesterday. I don't think I'm going to do anything tomorrow. I've got a Netflix special I've got to catch up on. But at the same time, though, is still together we still have the same God who is moving those mountains one step at a time through us. We've lost people that we love and we care about recently. One of the things I loved yesterday during the service is seeing so many people whose lives were touched by this wonderful person that I was blessed to get to know for a year and a half. But what was amazing is realizing that it wasn't because there was one big event, but rather an entire lifetime of Christ living in this person. And that each step, even the moments when she was just sitting there, smiling, or even telling me I went too long in Bible class, <laughs> is knowing that that heart and that that spirit and that passion was leading her down a path that we will all get to join her on soon. I don't know what's tripping you up today. I don't know what it is that's an obstacle to you. I don't know what it is that's getting in your way. Whether you're struggling because you know there are people you need to reach out to, whether you know there's some discipline that you, you want to push more that you haven't, or whether even that there's something inside of you that's just angry and hurt towards others, I don't know what it is. But I also know that even at this moment in time, if you are struggling because you're saying, I don't feel like I want to do this, it has nothing to do with how strong you are. Because it's the same Jesus who made it to the cross and gave himself for us and rose again. So tomorrow and the next day and the next day, that mustard seed is still growing. So as much as you may be struggling, the one you have faith in is not. And he already has it taken care of. Thanks be to God.